Today, we're going on a bike ride, taking the DJI Osmo Action on top of my helmet, and I'll be going through parks and urban areas to see how well the stabilization works. Our tests will be conducted at 4K 60 frames per second, followed by 2.7K at 60 frames per second. DJI recommends 2.7K for best stabilization performance, so let's see if it's true and if it really does make a difference. All footage is kept at a fixed shutter speed of 1 20th of a second. The ISO is also kept at a fixed value of 100, and this allows maximum quality, avoiding noise and in built noise reduction. There's more information in the description, but I really recommend you do the same. I always make sure the scene is well exposed by choosing the most appropriate CPL ND filters. For these videos, I use the CPL ND filter of 8, but make sure you carry around the 16, 32 and 64 versions too, just in case the scene gets too bright. I don't color grade my footage that much, I rather use a CPL filter to add extra saturation and vibrancy to the picture, so it saves me time in post and keeps colors very natural. You can find again the links down in the description. Alright, so I just got a warning now saying that the LCD screen is overheating, so it's going to switch it off in 3 seconds. So the camera is definitely overheating. If you live in a warmer climate, you're going to encounter this, that's for sure. Up to here was 4K, 60 frames per second, rock steady on. I forgot to mention that it's also the D-Warp is on. I don't remove it because I don't like to straighten in post. It saves me time. Uh, now on the way back, I'm going to do 2.7K, uh, 60 frames per second. Let's go. Now I have to admit that the 2.7K offers a better stabilization in my opinion. You'll be sacrificing resolution for smoother footage, but for some activities that may make much more sense than having the highest resolution possible. The stabilization at both resolutions functions so well that it almost feels like you're flying through thin air. The footage that you're watching right now is shot at 60 frames per second, meaning that you can slow it down by half the speed and obtain an even more stabilized video in slow motion. The places I went to had several bumps along the way, several terrains and tiles that made the bike jump up and down significantly. It never caused a problem to the footage, still stabilized as if you were flying through thin air. Check these two different type of terrains. So you got smooth tiles, transitioning to bumpy tiles, and it's absolutely stabilized without any hiccup. Now the video quality is of course above average, since the ISO values are kept at 100 consistently. The CPL filter really makes a large difference, both in colors popping more than usual, but also the sky being slightly darker and the water having less reflection on the surface. If you're getting this camera, don't use the automatic settings, please don't. Go manual. Its performance is really out of this world for this action camera and if you use automatic, you're just like throwing everything, the money you spent, down the drain. If you want a true first person POV, eating something and having your hands free, doing something and having your hands free, you know, uh, I recommend getting the GoPro DJI mouth mount. It adapts to your teeth and it makes any footage like if it was in first person perspective. So you can ride a bike, run, play sports, roam around with your hands free the whole time. You can do unboxing, you can meet your friends, you can do all these things in first person and this is going to be the most realistic way of doing it. It's a really cool accessory, just be careful with your teeth, don't fall with it and if you do just let go because you're gonna crack them. Links are again down in the description. You can use the sticky mount the DJI Osmo Action comes with on your helmet but it'll definitely not look like a real first person perspective. You'll be taller than anyone else around you. One thing I noticed through these tests is that if your helmet is slightly crooked it'll compromise all of your takes. The camera is missing the horizon lock features GoPro 8 and 9 have, forcing you to either install it well or to rectify the tilt in post by rotating the video slightly, losing precious video real estate. 
Another disappointing factor is that the camera overheated several times while I was shooting. It just gave me another message saying that the action camera is overheating and it just stopped my video from recording and I have to wait. Like right now it's doing it again. That's something I never experienced before given the fact that I was shooting in colder times of the year so far. The camera has different triggering stages when it overheats. It first warns you, then it warns you and automatically switches the screen off. And if the camera is critically overheated, it automatically switches off until it has cooled down. Now you'll have to wait here. You really cannot shoot when it's this critically overheated. This isn't a big problem for me. I was shooting for 20 straight minutes in 4K at 60 frames per second with Rocksteady and D-Warp turned on. So it's normal for any camera to heat up. For my type of shoots, these type of warnings won't happen but it might be a problem for those who record videos non-stop until the SD card runs out of memory. It's very likely your camera will overheat unless you have it in the shade away from the heat. In any case, this camera is extremely reliable. On a bike, you're like a human dolly. It's really like if you're flying and you don't even have to try so hard. Just make sure that you have a straight helmet Make sure you tighten it well on the back, on the clips here to avoid wobbly movements and you're good to go. Also preview if you're crooked because then you'll have to crop in. Now I love this camera, I cannot hide it. It's not a paid promotion, I bought this camera myself just so we're clear. Feel free to check the description, there's a few interesting videos we did with this camera and a really nice technical review too. You can also find samples to footage so that you can edit them and see them if they're on par with your other cameras. So I gotta say, I'm pleasantly surprised with the performance uh, of the Rocksteady. Regardless 4K or 2.7K, it's performing really, really well. Of course, when I'm gonna be doing these type of action videos, when I'm on my bike, uh, I'll definitely use a 2.7K. Another really good thing that I wanted to outline is that the audio is great. Like, uh, I've been going quite fast and the sound of the wind is really, really reduced. And I'm not using anything additional. It's the inbuilt microphone, so uh, nothing additional there. Now you might be asking yourself, what the hell is this little thing around my neck? Please don't mock me for it. They look like headphones, but no, not really. <laughs> uh, this is like a fan for your face, like in case you're sweating and you're dying, instead of using like a big fan or something. And this is portable, you can go on the subway with it, or of course you're gonna look a little bit douchey, but it's so hot in Czech Republic nowadays, this is what it does. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> okay, no, it doesn't give you an orgasm, but still, it's really good. I gotta say, it's really nice. It, it, it cools down your face, and if you're sweating, it's really sweet. The company's called Torras. So you can find the links in the description. Thank you, Torras. <sighs> now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I will see you on our next one. Peace!